Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Shane this morning. Monday morning, a little cloudy outside. Um, man, after yesterday, I was kind of, I, I was ready for some sun, really enjoyed that beautiful day. So uh, thanks for joining me this morning. Hopefully you are doing well. And um, well, I, my hope is, is that you are uh, being deeply encouraged by the Lord in, uh, as, as you have maybe for some of us, we have more opportunity to be in the Word, uh, more opportunity to study and um, to engage in the text. So that, that's my hope is that this time is, is um, uh, growing uh, in you a passion and a heart for um, the Word of God and for dependency on Him. Um, that, is, that is really my heart in all of our time together is that um, we as a body become very dependent on God and on His Word. So um, that is what, what I'm anticipating, what we're looking for, and what I hope is happening for many, many of you. Uh, good morning, Petersons. Good to see you guys. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, I'm going to work on um, not being me and saying hi to everybody that shows up, but just to to um, say good morning to all of you. And please know that um, even if I don't acknowledge you when you show up on my screen, uh, it is great uh, to have you here. Good to see you guys and um, really miss being with you. I anticipate the day that we can join back together um, and, and be together. Part of what we're uh, long-term looking at is um, that this segment, the Coffee with Shane thing that we're doing, will probably, uh, over the next couple weeks, just scale it back a little bit and do a little bit less um, each week, anticipating that at some point we're going to be back to a full-time uh, regular schedule. Um, may may keep a, a, a weekly morning coffee or something like that. I'm still praying through that process, what God would have me to do. I've really enjoyed this time. It's been super fruitful for me um, to be in the word and to be processing and, and, you know, how do we, how do I talk with you about this? How do I share with you kind of what God's doing in my own heart? Um, and, uh, so it's been good. It's, it's been a good process and I, I don't know quite sure yet what God's going to do, um, in that area or, or what he may do differently there, but, um, definitely something to be praying with. You would pray for me in it. I would really appreciate it. And, uh, we'll be, um, you know, as we go forward, uh, kind of thinking about and looking at those different options. So it is great to see you. Hopefully you have um, your favorite drink. It was interesting this morning, just as a side note, uh, one of those personal things that happen, you know, when, when you're at home and, and uh, your boys are home and uh, in the process of, of uh, you know, working and, and getting out on their own. Um, but Sally and I have been trying to adjust our diet a little bit to eat a little healthier and my boys, who are young and active, uh, don't find the same um, need to watch their diet. And so one of my boys actually brought home a box full of donuts, which are not helpful and um, are not necessary for me. And yet this morning when I got up there, I, I kind of walked up to the box and I was like, man, I hope there's an apple fritter left because I really love apple fritters. And there was. And I found myself going, um, wow, that is really cool. I am grateful. And so um, little things to be grateful for this morning as I did not need the donut, but I was thankful for it. So um, hopefully you are thankful this morning and you are anticipating great things from the Lord today um, as we engage in his word. In Psalm 19, um, I, I believe that if we look at this, we're going to see the text break down into three different segments, and we're going to take a few minutes and walk through those three segments and look at what David is is uh, proclaiming in the psalm, in this song to the Lord that that he wrote, um, and and it's 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 a wonderful thing to think if with me, if you will, as as we look at King David and. And how is it that he has this perspective of God? How does he see these things about God? You know, we use the word of God to look at this stuff and to see these things and to pull some of this perspective that David has. So it's just interesting to me. Um, I wonder if the book of Job or, you know, some of the writings of the Torah, the, the law, um, haven't inspired some of David's perspective about God and, and how he views him and how he sees him. So uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 19, and we're going to jump into that today. Psalm 19, 
um, starting in verse 1 is where we're going to pick up um, this morning. Um, Psalm 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are, these, are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he, sent, uh, he set a tent for the sun which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and like a strong man runs its course with joy. It rises, uh, its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. We're going to stop right there because uh, th that's kind of the first block that we see in this, in this Psalm 19 verses 1 through 6. And it's amazing as David talks about um, the, the heavens declaring his glory, this, this picture of the heavens that, that are magnificent. And, and he says, he speaks of them as if in their presence, in their existence, they declare the glory of God, they, their, their words. He actually uses that language, day to day pours out speech. Um, the sky above proclaims his handiwork. The, the, the night reveals knowledge. Um, he even says there that there is no speech nor nor are there words um whose voice is not heard here here's he he's talking about the heavens and and the voices of the heavens and and all of these wonderful things in fact that's one of the unique things um that they found some of the astrologers have found as they've as they've pointed microphones out at the stars and the universes and they've actually heard sounds coming back pulses a, a pulsating noise coming back um, and it just, it's mind boggling to me to, just to wonder, is that, you know, how, did David somehow have insight from the Lord? Was there something that he gained to, to know that? We do now, we look at it, we can see it now from, uh, from our perspective and, and it's pretty amazing because of the technology that we use to read those things and to see all that stuff. Um, and then he, he, he speaks of the sun and and the, how the heavens are a tent they they're they're like a covering for the sun and its activity and how it comes out um like a bridegroom super excited to be there i mean i'm i'm sure the bridegroom comes out of his chamber just excited about engaging and being in the wedding that, that I, I remember my own life anticipating my bride coming down the aisle there was just big cheesy grin on my face i was it was such a, a wonderful exciting moment and day it was it was spectacular, and he, he speaks of the sun in this way and then talks about it running its course. It rises um, uh, in the ends of the heavens, and it completes its circuit to the other end of them, and there's nothing hidden from its heat. Here's the spectacular picture of the heavens and the magnificence of all of those things and, and everything that comes with God's design in the heavens and how they proclaim his glory, glory how it, it, it extols who God is and it testifies on the face of the earth to this grandeur, to the, to the creator, the maker of these things, and it tells of his existence. And that's, that's the first six verses. That's the first block that we see David explaining here. Um, and then in verse 7, he kind of switches gears and we go to another block of information in verses 7 through 10. So let's look at that this morning. Um, verse 7 of, of Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, rev uh, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is, sh is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and dripping of the honeycomb. It, in my heart, what, what grabs me in that text is asking myself the question, is that how I view the word of God? Is that how I view, you know, what God has given us in the scriptures? The, the language that he uses here is is strong and very specific and very clear. Uh, he calls the word of the Lord perfect and it's reviving our soul. 
that that when that our souls are in the word of God, the, our souls are revived. Um, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. That the things of the, the the word of the Lord, the testimonies, his his statements bring wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. The thoughts of the Lord are are right, and causes the heart to rejoice for those who are who are following them. Those who are faithful. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Um, and and then the rules of the Lord are true. It's just all of these these the 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 language that he uses here is talking about the word of God and how it applies um, because of his character. All of the ways that it's perfect, sure, right, pure, clean, true, that more valuable than gold. You know, the the sweeter than honey. Um, and and how amazing all of those things about the word of the Lord are. And and. So you can you see the picture, right? The the first segment of this passage is uh, the, the, look at the heavens, look look out, and look at the creation, and recognize the the wonder of this God who created these things, and how how the creation testifies, it proclaims of His glory. And then David begins to talk about the Torah, the law of the Lord. And how perfect. I love, I, you can just look down in your own text, verses 7 through 10, just grab the words that he's describing this with, right? Perfect, sure, right, pure, clean, true, more more valuable, more desirable, desirable uh, than gold and, and sweeter than honey. Those are the descriptions of the word of God. And I just... I, I what, what I've been wrestling with today is going, man, God, is that how I see your word? Is that, a, is that how I accept, how I revere, how I pursue your word? Um, do I really see this as being more desirable than gold? More desirable than, than possessions or money or, or any of those things? And, um, Man, I want to. I really do. I want that to be the passion of my heart. I want that to be the desire of my heart. I want it to be everything that I pursue, everything that's important to me. Um, I don't know that it always is. And and um, I believe that God is in the process of changing that and, and redirecting that in my own heart and in my own life. Um, and I love that. I just, I, I just, I'm amazed at how David views God in this process and how David views the heavens in this in this psalm. And then and then he makes a third transition. So the the, the third gear that we have here, the third um uh I don't know what you'd call it. Anyway, the third section of this psalm. I was going to say the third act, but we're not watching a, a a theatrical presentation or opera here, but um so the, the the third piece of this is verses 11 through 14. And, and look at what David does. Look at how he changes directions here, right? He, verse 11, he goes, Moreover, by them your servant, moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So here David paints this beautiful picture. He looks up into the creation, he sees the heavens, and he declares, he, he, he extols the, how, how that creation, the beauty and wonderment of the heavens, declares the glory of God, that, that he set them in place, and they speak to the glory of God. When you look out at the heavens, when you see the sun and the stars and, and everything that happens in there, we actually recognize, or, or we can see, that, that God is creator and that it is, it's, it's praising him it's declaring or proclaiming his glory and then david switches to the law and he says how wonderful it is how perfect it is uh, again the key words that he uses perfect sure right pure clean true more desirable than gold sweeter than honey he explains the word of god in that way and, and describes this tangible um it, it's he gives physical description to how wonderful the word of God is, and then he adjusts the lens a little bit and he looks at his own heart, 
And he, and, he, and he recognizes that in the word of God, in the testimony of the heavens, that a servant of God, somebody that is a follower of God, would look at those things and be warned by them. He would, those, those, those truths, those realities would actually affect the life of the believer and, and they would take warning or be cautioned by them. And then he begins to look into his heart even more in verse 12. And he says, who can discern his errors? He recognizes that we don't always see our junk very well. We don't always seem to notice when our mess is. In fact, it's very interesting, isn't it? That we're typically very okay with our own mess. I would show you my desk right now, but my wife would be appalled um, because it's in her house. But it's a disaster. Um, and I'm not in my office, so I don't have some of the stuff for me to organize my desk. And it's just a complete disaster right now. I've got a little space to work. I've got a space for my coffee cup, and I, you know, it, it's but it's it's just a mess. Now, if people were coming over to my house, this would not stay this way. Why? Because I, it's kind of a mess, and I think it's a mess, and I wouldn't really want to share that with everybody else. But when I'm left to myself, I can live with it. It's my mess. I'm used to it. I kind of know where everything's at. I can live with it. I think that's an interesting perspective when it comes to our own heart, right? David recognizes, he asks this question, who can discern his errors? And, 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 then, he, and then he pleads with the Lord really to say, you, God, declare me innocent from hidden faults. Please address the, 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 the innocent, the hidden faults, the things that I'm not seeing about my life. You are the one that causes those. You are the one, or not causes those. You're the one that cancels those. You are the one that causes salvation and, and forgiveness of sin. You're the one that brings that about. And so in these areas where I'm not aware of my sin, where I'm not aware of the things that are, that are a problem for me, cancel them. Uh, 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 you know, Declare me innocent in these by your grace, by your salvation, your provision. You've got to do this because I can't even see them. And then in verse 13, he takes on this idea of keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. This idea of arrogant or, or um, what's the, I've got, I've got my, uh, my um, Bible here that actually gives me the definition. It's my concordance. And um, I love what this thing says about this particular word in the Greek. Um, the idea is insolent or presumptuous. Um, it, it's, it's this it's a behavioral thing and it says audacious or arrogant behavior to which one does not have a right. So Paul or, or, or uh, David recognizes that there's an arrogance to our heart. There's uh, an arrogance even to our sin that we would actually stand um, presumptuously before God as if we were innocent, even though we're in sin. And so David is addressing this issue of his heart saying, God, take care of the sins that I'm not aware of, but then also take care of the sins that somehow I think it's okay for me to do. The ones that I arrogantly or presumptuously come before you with that sin in my life, with it unconfessed. And then he states at the end of this, let them not have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. He recognizes that even in that moment, that it is God who brings the innocence. It is God who, who makes him blameless because he's covering the sin. And I, I love that David recognizes this. Recognizes this. So he's looking at the, he's looking out in, in this psalm. He's looking out at the universe. He sees the stars and the sun and the heavens. And he says, that declares the glory of God. That proclaims who God is. And when I look at that and when I see that, I'm overwhelmed by this reality that God is real and that God, God exists and that he's engaged in this universe and I am in his service. I am part of that creation and I am, I am to be subject to him in that. Then he pulls out the law and he, he, he explains the beauty and perfection of the law and how it's perfect and true and sure and clean and right and all of these things and it's of greater value than any possessions on this earth. And in that context, it is the thing to be pursued and to be passionately consumed with and, and, and to follow and to live in obedience to and to let it actually come in as he switches into the third section to, to allow the word of God to be the warning, to allow it to actually um, filter out in our lives the things that do not honor God and, and to expose them so that we can go to God and say, forgive us for this. God, you got you to gotta take care of this because I can't even do it on my own. 
to the point where David says, get, the, get rid of the hidden stuff, get rid of the arrogant stuff, get rid of all of these things that make me blameless, that make me a great transgressor before this God of the universe. And as he wraps up that passage, he, he gives one of, the, one of my favorite psalms, um, which I have many, so I don't know if I can even call them favorites anymore. Um, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my God and my Redeemer. And as we think about how, how he's building this picture, when we have our eyes up on God's creation outside of us, the, the big picture, the, the universal um, magnificence of God. And then we come down and we, we dig into the rightness and the perfection of his word, the beauty of his word. Those two things help to bring in perspective the, the, the wretchedness of our sin, the difficulty of our own hearts to follow God. And in that posture, David says, God, let the words of my mouth, the things that I say, the things that come out of me, and the meditations of my heart, the things that I, that I hold deep inside, that I think about, that I meditate on in my heart, let those be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my um, redeemer. I can tell you that I have days where the words of my mouth possibly honor the Lord. I have days where the words of my mouth do not. Um, whether it's out of anger, selfishness, pride, um, ignorance, whatever it is, that those things happen. Um, and, and even the meditations of my heart, the things that consume my heart, the things that, that I find myself mulling over and, and constantly thinking about. Um, sometimes it's my Mustang. Sometimes it's, it's, um, it's, the, it's our, our possessions here on this earth. It's things that are physical that we need to deal with. Sometimes it's anxiety and things that I'm afraid of or, or, or dealing with in fear. Sometimes it's the Lord. It's the things of his word. It's what we're going to do next. Um, sometimes it's people that I don't like or, or people that I disagree with. And I find myself um, wrestling and, and being consumed by that. In fact, so often, that's the, one of the reasons I took Facebook off of my phone. And, and it's back on right now because I'm using that to communicate with you guys. And as we go forward, I'll, I'll, probably, um, I'll probably get rid of it again because it is so difficult at times for me to be focused on the Lord when I have so much other noise screaming at, for my attention. And uh, I think David had it right that where, where he starts with the magnificence of God in his creation. He goes to the perfection of God, the beauty of God, the, the perfect sureness of God in his word. And he takes both of those pictures and he applies them to his heart and he says, God, purify this. Do the work that you do and make this, make me right before you because I can't do it on my own. I don't have it within me to, to, to actually respond to you correctly. So help me do that today. And I, I want to encourage you guys today to, to take that time and to do that this morning. Um, my heart in this is that you become so passionately um, dependent on, on God um, that, that you don't, as much as we enjoyed our time together, that, that you don't have time for this anymore. That you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here on Facebook with me, but you'd be in, in the Word. And you'd be, you'd be wrestling with the Word of God. And as, as the weeks go forward, we're going we're gonna to cut back on, on how many times a week I'm, I'm on here talking. And, and my, my prayer is that each one of you would grow in your passion for the Word of God, would grow in your conviction um, of the word of God would grow in your fear and awe of God as, as you look at his creation, as you look at his word, as you look at um, how they apply effect, how they warn us, how they, how they shine the light of truth on our own hearts, and that your passion would grow as my passion grows for the word. And, and we would become dependent not on one another um, for this particular area of growth, but we would become desperately dependent on the Lord. Um, although we are, as the body of Christ, as we learned yesterday, we are the blessing for one another. We are the gift that God gave each of us as a family, as families, as the church family, we are the, the, the bride of Christ. And so there's a great blessing. There's a great gift in the church. But that blessing, that gift of the church 
It is best exercised when we are dependent on the source, on the head of the church, on Christ, on God the Father, on his magnificence, on his word, and allowing that to affect how we live, allowing that to, 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 to purify, to, to shine, again, shine that light, his light into our hearts and, and expose the things that we're unaware of, expose the things that we're presumptuous about in our own walks with him. That's my prayer this morning, is that you and I would find that place. You and I would be convicted of that truth. You and I would, would experience what David saw in God in Psalm 19, and that we'd be in awe of him, that, that we would fear the Lord, and that um, in that fear, it would be the beginning of wisdom, godly wisdom, that would change how we live, change how we love, uh, change how we, how we respond in obedience to the Lord, how, how we are gospel lights to our neighborhood, to our work communities, how we love the church, how we care for one another. Well, that was my, that was my thoughts on Psalm 19, and um, I'm sure there is much, much more in there. You guys know, um, if you've been with me for very long, I tend to take a pretty simple approach to this stuff because I think God meant it for, for the average person. Um, I love uh, one of the things Tyler always says, Tyler Whitlatch. Uh, he's one of my one of my Greek and and uh, language guys that I love. Is that you know Greek was written in the common man a commoner's language. And it was meant for the average person to be in here and reading the word of God. And so I just want to encourage you to, to be like me, to, 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 to hunger for God to speak to you in his word. And um, don't be dependent on, on men, on, on others to tell you what God says. Go and find it. Go and get it. Let the Holy Spirit who lives in you as one of his children lead you and guide you in the text. Um, it, it's the safest. It's the, it's the best place to be. It's the most rich place to be. Um, it's where the greatest blessing for the church comes is when we are dependent on God and when we're engaging him and, and as you know, the phrase that I've, I'm working on because I just love it is as we chase the text, as we as we get in it and, and, and wrestle with it and engage it, I believe that the it's the desire of the Spirit to speak and to direct and to call us up, to call us into action and into relationship with Him. So God bless you guys. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. And um, Please be praying for one another, be praying for the church, be praying for our governor, be praying for wh whoever is governor, wherever, whatever you're at. I know there's sometimes people here that aren't even in the lovely state of Washington. Um, but let's be praying for our governors and for God's wisdom, that they would have uh, wisdom beyond their capacity and, and that God would, would bring this, uh, this process uh, to his completion and his fulfillment, whatever that is. And that we, his church, we, the body of Christ, would be, um, would be set ablaze with a passion for him and a fire for him to go in and get after what it is he's called us to be. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that that's how we would live and that that's how we would worship and celebrate him this week. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And uh, I, my, my, my prayer will be for you as we close this morning. Uh, for you and for me, that we would find greater dependency in the Lord today. So bow your heads and I'm going to pray real quick and then we'll be, we'll be gone. I almost said dismissed. Isn't that crazy? Um, Lord, would you um, light a fire in each of our hearts that we would be desperately dependent to hear from you today, even out of your word, uh, even out of in, the, in, in this moment, in, in what we consider to be difficult times, which is really not difficult to what the, the, what the um, apostles had to put up with or what Paul put up with or what our Savior Jesus had to suffer through. So help us to have a right perspective of this time. But I pray, God, that you would light up a fire and a passion in our hearts, that we would, we would seek you, we would pursue, we would chase your word, we would, we would value it as greater than gold, sweeter than honey. We would see all of these things that, that David gives us in Psalm 19, Lord, and it would affect how we live, that we would be able to say, may the, meditation, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you today. 
for your kingdom's glory, for your purposes and yours alone. May you be glorified in everything we do today, Lord. We give you the praise and, and, and worship this morning because of who you are. And uh, we just thank you for being faithful and our provider in your name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch up with you tomorrow about 10 o'clock.